So with it now being 7 years since the last mainline installment, Serious Sam 4 has finally been announced. While we only have a teaser trailer for the game at the time of this writing, this reveal has inspired an urge for me to revisit the series back to the moment it began, so today we'll be reviewing Crow Team's 2001 PC release, Serious Sam The First Encounter. Well, today we'll actually be looking at the 2009 HD remake of the game for a couple of reasons. The first is that having played both versions a fair bit, I personally see the HD remake as a purely visual upgrade, with no major gameplay changes that I could personally detect. Everything about the core gameplay I'll say here will hold true to the original version. In fact, if you'd prefer to play the original release and you don't want to pirate it, Crow Team has graciously allowed you to easily obtain both versions of the game on Steam and GOG. Hey, it's almost like giving the option to your consumers to legally purchase both the original and remastered versions of your game is a good idea, Nampo! Crow Team started development on the game in 1996, originally under the name In the Flesh. The game was directly inspired by Doom, but because Crow Team couldn't afford the engine, they developed their own called the Escape 3D engine, and the project started a leading character called Fleshy Guy at the time. However, in 1998, the CEO of Crow Team, Roman Riberick, excuse the pronunciation, allegedly received a vision that told him to brand in the flesh as something else. And no, I'm not joking, this is actually what the Serious Sam wiki writes down as the reason for the change of direction. So, the protagonist became the multiplayer character Hilarious Harry, the escape engine was replaced with the Serious engine, and in the flesh became Serious Sam. So, with almost 17 years between now and the initial release of the first encounter, how well does this game hold up? We'll have to dive in and find out. The story of the first encounter centers around this unseen alien entity named Mental who invades Earth in the future. In an effort to stop him, a guy named Sirius Sam Stone is sent back in time to Egypt so he can kick his ass in the ancient past. The story of Sirius Sam The First Encounter is basic and only really factors into the text crawl at the very beginning. However, it gets the game moving along, gives the player a reason to shoot guys, and provides an interesting setting to run around and shoot guys in. All in all, the best kind of raw action game plot. However, Sam himself as a leading man is a very fun character to play around with. His voice is memorable, and his corny dad jokes make him endearing. The gag with him is essentially that he isn't anywhere near as funny as he clearly thinks he is, and it's great. I'm over here, you stupid headless freaks. Sam is easily one of the best first-person shooter protagonists, at least from where I'm sitting. The sound design is snappy and indicates whatever it needs to do well, from ammo pickups, health and armor supplies, and the individual enemy noises. In fact, the last of those three is one of the best aspects of the audio, since the real challenge of the game is managing all of the different enemies and being able to differentiate between the separate opponents. Anyone who has played the game for a sufficient amount of time will be able to recall the distinctive sounds of the headless kamikaze charge and the rattling of the clears running at you. But the general ease at which the player can recognize the enemies by ear alone is a great element. The music too is fairly solid, being made up of mostly ambient tracks that act as relaxing background noise, and more pumped up pieces for the action segments. The first encounter doesn't really adhere to a music genre, and while what is here isn't anything fantastic, there are a couple memorable songs. Both versions of the first encounter look very nice, and contain minimal slowdown or frame rate drops. It's also impressive just how many enemies can be present on screen at once in both versions, with some arenas having well over a hundred enemies running at the player at a single time. While the simple behavior of the enemies is certainly an asset that makes this easier, it's still an admirable feat. With all of that preamble out of the way, let's get to the one thing that matters above all else in the first encounter, the gameplay. Serious Sam is a game, and really an entire series, centered around just one thing, shooting. There are a number of other things the player does while playing it, but shooting is the one true constant throughout the game, and is what the game is centered around. The enemies in the first encounter primarily do one of two things, run towards the player or just shoot them. The enemies which shoot do so with either a projectile attack or a hitscan one. On their own, the rogues aren't actually a threat to the player in any meaningful capacity, but the whole point of the game is having to deal with the sheer number of them attacking all at once. While the game does start off slow, something which we'll touch on later on, some levels can have upwards of 500 enemies present within them. It does certainly prioritize quantity over quality of enemies, but the vast quantity at times can absolutely make up for it. 
There are about 20 different enemies within the first encounter, and this does help alleviate the potential repetition the player could feel from fighting so many of them. Generally speaking, the first encounter also mixes and matches its enemy cast well enough. Mixing the bowls with the clears forces the player to manage dozens of charging enemies, with the slower ones spawning in higher numbers and being able to throw projectiles on top of that. The charging Nars with the rocket shooting redfish force the players to manage dodging punches and projectiles all at once. And of course, the headless kamikaze being thrown into the mix always livens up the encounters. I could go on, but the point is clear. Not to mention, by the time you finish the first encounter, you're guaranteed to see every single enemy combination the game could potentially throw at you. The real challenge and enjoyment found in the first encounter comes from managing hundreds of enemies, mixing melee hitscan and projectile attacks all at once, bobbing and weaving in between attacks and wide open spaces while managing the dozen or so different weapons at your disposal. When it's at its best moments, it's a fantastic experience that can almost feel like a first person bullet hell, albeit a fairly tame one by that genre's standards. There are, however, some genuine issues present. The enemy placement and pacing is off in certain areas. On a petty level, the first encounter just loves spamming clears at you, among other enemies. Other enemies, namely being these little pricks. The marsh hopper spam in this game is beyond irritating, and this room right here is the one thing that always makes me hesitate replaying the game. They're not tough enemies necessarily, even when attacking en masse, but I guarantee that this room on the serious difficulty will be the bane of your playthrough. On the other end of the spectrum, the game does take a fair bit to really get going. The first handful of levels are trying to ease the player into the horde shooting style Serious Sam, which is fine and dandy and all, but it makes for playing them a bit of a pain considering how little is really going on. Once the player enters the level called Dunes, then the first encounter kicks it into high gear and never stops going at that pace, but it still takes its sweet time getting there. The weapons present here make up quite the varied arsenal. There are two different shotguns, automatic weapons, and explosive weapons at the player's disposal, with the two power weapons being the laser gun and the cannon. With the exception of the cannon, which is by the by one of the best weapons in a first person shooter, the guns in the first encounter are genre standard fare, although they do feel very satisfying to use. The minigun here is among the best ones present in any first person shooter out there, it's a hell of a lot of fun to use. One thing about the first encounter that gives it a unique edge is that, more than any other shooter I can think of, Picking which weapon to use for what situation is absolutely vital to success. Each enemy is vulnerable to a few different weapons, and deciding which one is most appropriate for a given fight starts off easy enough, but later on the first encounter forces you to mix and match between ideal weapons on the fly. I've read elsewhere that the first encounter, and Serious Sam in general, structure their combat encounters like fast-paced and high-stakes puzzle games, and while I don't completely agree with it as a metaphor, it does get the idea across for the type of mindset to walk into the fights with. Alongside the occasional issues with the enemy use, there is one other major flaw with the game, which is the level design. Being frank, it's subpar. Around the time this game was released, first person shooter level design fell into one of two categories, generally speaking. You have the more maze-like affairs of the classics, and the less complex, more circular examples of the then contemporary titles. However, the first encounter doesn't fall into either camp. The average level in it boils down to a straight line connecting the players to the arenas, and as the game goes on these arenas just become wide open spaces to fit all the enemies in. While the art direction certainly looks nice, getting down to brass tacks, the levels are basic affairs which don't match up to the best the competition has to offer. While a rather flawed game, Serious Sam The First Encounter is a nice first entry into the series, which has a unique style that spawned a series of homages and imitators that don't quite capture that same magic. While it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, The First Encounter provides raw action that should win over any FBS fan who somehow hasn't played it at this point. In fact, one might argue that giving a positive recommendation for a game this old, and this relatively famous, is redundant, but what can you do?